I am someone who films light. I started doing this because I was seeing in light some strange looking things. I wanted to talk about them to others, only without being able to show what I was seeing in light, it was something that only made me seem to be a person deluded. Yet I knew that what I saw was something important and needed to be shared. I needed to discuss this with others, and to me it was, and still is, important for science to also look into this as well. So far, I have not attracted the attention of science. I hope to make this video to be the first of a series of videos which I will link together and present as a documentary. So, I continue to take pictures of light. At least for my part, I will have a visual record of what I see light doing. My method of taking these pictures is simple. Anyone who has a digital camera that allows for zooming in very close can take these pictures. At least I think they can. I have found light, the light orb to be sort of like a contortionist. It can move and bend in so many different directions, many of which I will be showing you in this documentary. Light moves orb-like. I capture these light orbs in many stages of movement. The colors can be very beautiful and interesting in that there are some unusual features I see in the orb. Orbs undergo much alteration, even as I am viewing them. In this one, the orb seems to be coming apart in the upper part of it. These orbs resemble a grove of trees. I'm trying to get the Newton's lines out of this. But you just can't really do that too well. Dang it, it's showing up so bad. That little moving uh, line thing isn't part of the picture. It's something when I film off of my computer screen that I always get. Yeah, it's a little better. Moving on. This is my prayer. Dear God, all that is, I pray that I reveal in these pictures of light all that you would have me to make known to mankind. This one camera I use has what I call artifacts in it. These are stuck in my camera's insides and they always show up in the same part of the picture. What is unusual about them is that they look just like things that are in the photon pictures. So I do wonder what they could possibly be. I will show them one by one. I'm going to bring you up to one of them. This right here is one. And this one is one I call the little fairy, but she's dark here, so you can't make out her, her looks. And this one is what I call the double-jointed uh, artifact. And here's one right here. Here's my newest one. Oh, you can't see that. Here's one right here. And maybe if I can move this up. No, it can't. Okay, and there's several others of them. But I will show you a few of them in the next few pictures. Here's the one. They often have different colors behind them. And if the color of the orb is really dark, I don't see them at all. There's one of them. There's the double jointed one. And I've seen many little things in my orb pictures that look just like this. And there's the little fairy. She shows up a little better there. And this right here is a series of what I call bullet holes because it's like one there, 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 and then down here, all the way down. There's a fourth one, and they're just all uh, even, but at a diagonal-like uh, place. And that just my most recent orb. This, this one right here that I'm pointing to, that was the first one I ever had. It looks like a little pea pod with little uh, lumpy things in it. But then a lot of things in the orbs I take pictures of look exactly like that as well. There's another one. And another one. There are oh so many rings with concentric rings around them. 
in the photons. And if you, I'll bring it in close so you can see there's tiny little rings, really tiny. There's my first artifact right there. And uh, there are just so many. Um, there's one double jointed one. And they came one by one. Uh, I, I sometimes think, well, I'll probably get another one sooner or later. Okay, now this is an unusual thing to see in a photon. It looks like a, a, a tail of something, like a rat's tail or something. <laughs> I have no idea what it is. But it seems to be lapped over that orb. There are often tube-looking parts of, to the photon. I, call, I, I will probably say photon or orb, but what I mean is a light photon which is orb-like in appearance. But the orb is just like a seeing device for seeing what is in this uh, domain because when I move my camera around, this extends out beyond like I could see the continuation of this uh, worm-looking thing if I moved over in to the left. I see these with the naked eye and have been told that they are something called floaters. You've probably heard of that. Floaters being something floating on the surface of the eye, which they claim is a physical thing like a torn retina. Does my camera have a torn retina? Ha! Huh. You know, I think that's strange if people insist, oh, that's just what you're looking at. And it's like, no, my camera sees this too. And people, there are such a thing as floaters and people who, people who have them, they have um, an inability to see clearly because they, these floaters get in their view. It makes it hard for them to see clearly. But when I look at the float, what looks like floaters, I have to squint my eyes and deliberately decide I want to see them. They don't just come there unbidden. And here's another orb showing some of them. And another circles and tubes. And often little white spots like these right here. And they seem to move about in the orb. And uh, they're interesting. This orb shows what looks like the guts of the photon. Like it's open up and you're seeing what's inside. And this one has little colorful bubbles. And I've seen these colorful bubbles in other places. And this orb seems to be cracked open and they just, oh, it's full of the little colorful bubbles. Or you can see something that seems to be on the surface of the orb. And if you look at this, right in here where I'm pointing, with my arrow, if you can see that. The colors seem to fairly flow off the side of this orb out into another orb. The colors are very unique in, that, in the things that these colors can do. They can run from one orb to another. These photons are very beautiful and mysterious as well. Sometimes the colors are not in the form of an orb but just seem to be moving about, like this one right here. This one shows a sort of belt. It's, I, don't, can you, I don't know if this will make it a little easier to see, but this belt sort of wraps around the orb. You see it there, doing that. And uh, I've got another picture of this right there. You might see it better. It wraps around the orb, this colorful band of a darker color, which I see in quite a lot of the orbs. As a matter of fact, the dark sometimes is what I have to do when I'm, I've got the pictures off and I don't, I see too much light in it, so I darken it and the colors just pop out. And I'm realizing that colors wouldn't even be defined without the dark. Now this is an unusual thing. This is what I really make in this video to show is these little balls that seem to be lined and you see two of them as they almost touch right there. Well this pattern shows up a lot 
in other bigger orbs. And it just looks to me like they're being birthed here from a cocoon. See how this one is protruding out of it? I can't get that in the picture too good, but anyway. Now, in this next one, you'll see those two little balls of lines meeting, almost meeting, over and over. It's like it, it goes to make up what is in the orbs when they come out of that cocoon thing. Now, this is just speculating on my part. I have no idea what this dimension is showing me. All I can do is tell you this is what it's showing me. Here it is again. See? You see that? Those two balls that seem to be almost touching and they stretch and get uh, distorted in their looks but still you can make out that that's what that was. Now, this picture was is by a woman named Diane who also has a good web, uh, a good uh, YouTube channel. She takes pictures of orbs that are a lot different than mine mostly because she gets outdoor orbs a lot in the, in the sky. But this one really got my interest because look here. I'm going to pull it up where you can see it. There's the two lines. Oh, it's not showing up so good in my camera. But she had another one, another picture. Oops, went too far. See them there? Those little lined ball looking things that don't quite touch but they come real close. And this was in her uh, orb taking pictures she showed on her YouTube channel. I will give you the, um, in the description bar, I will give you her link so you can see all the many wonderful pictures she's taken. It is fantastic, this world of orbs. And she gets a lot of what she calls veils, like this white thing, I think, is part of a veil. But she has hundreds of pictures like this. Now, I want you to look at these pockets, little pockets, that have a little darker matter that seems to be inside them. I, I also see outside my body when I look at light, and I see two flaps that correspond in movement to the movement of my eye, my physical eye. So I think that probably that's my third eye. And I see little colorful bubbles just like these that are on the flaps that I see open and shut. And sometimes the little colorful bubbles turn loose and they go into the big orb that I'm looking at as well. Now this is closer up of that cluster of bubbles. Not that particular one, but one similar to it. And now watch the next one. They fall out. So there's stuff going on in these orbs. And um, sometimes I think that it's us who look at uh, the world and color it with all these little colorful bubbles. Because when I first began looking at a huge orb that would open up for me when I just look at light. I could see all kinds of things in it, but they were like black and white and gray. There wasn't much color. But one day, between those two flaps that I call my third eye, and these bubbles that seem to be eluding, protruding, I don't know the right word to use, but coming from my third eye, they went into the bigger orb and the bigger orbs started having colorful things in it, not just black and white. I get so many different kinds of looks, like I've never got this one ever quite the same again, but I thought this was, I got this several years ago, this picture right here. Because orbs, as they move, such they make such beautiful pictures. They're great artists. <laughs> now, look at this orb. It seems to be uh, that there's a coating on it, and underneath this, a lot, a lot of little colorful bubble things. And it seems to be emptying out of this orb here. 
and an orb can do this. It can twist right in the middle and be very colorful and do all kinds of contortions. Like I said, they are a contortionist. Now this picture shows something I got off the internet and it is uh, an article sh talking about self-propelling of subatomic particles. Now I think I'm looking at subatomic particles and this is an artist's rendition of what they think it might look like for them to do this self-propelling. Now notice this, this next picture is one of mine. The same woven effect of the of the uh, that the artist showed in the uh, previous picture. Self-propelling, and I get this a lot. I see it both with the naked eye and with my camera. And here's one that had a lot of little self-propelling things going on in it. And I, I got several views of this that day. And here's one that's that seems to have spawned from this that's above it or maybe this it started out as that and turned into this I don't know but uh, I get these kind of things all the time now when I'm looking at the light as it comes out of I mean I'm looking at the light orb as it comes out of the light source as it comes out it makes this kind of whitish but sometimes full of color but what happens is this orb makes another orb and bounces it out of itself into, and this on top part is going to be, be an, a third orb. These orbs, they move by stretching. And as they stretch, I think they're showing me what is in empty space. That's just my conjecture. I cannot say for sure. But I can say for sure that they move by stretching. <laughs> Look at this one as it makes a stretch. And you know, empty space is not really empty. It's full of stuff. I thought this was an unusual orb in what it did because it took the shape of a wine bottle. Looks sort of like caustic sometimes look when you shine a light down on a wine bottle. But that's not what this was. This was just the movement of the, uh, of the orb. You can see its little edges right here and right through here. It even had a label, which I went in there with a the program I have, and I put light wine for enlightenment, because <laughs> I love that one. Fluid like these orbs are. Look at this one. Looks like it's making a little waterfall right there as it flows down and over this other orb in the background. And you see it looks like it goes right over the edge of it and falls down further. So these orbs, they're really something. I took this picture of some horses or mules or whatever they are. In, they were in the sunlight and I could see with my camera all these beautiful rays of light with color in them and orbs. Now when you're looking with the naked eye, you don't see this. The camera showed this. This is a one-time only picture of an orb that did this thing, made these kind of little, this kind of look. I've never caught this doing that again. I often get a one-of-a-kind picture of an orb that, that doesn't repeat itself. And here's another of that self-propelling uh, kind of thing that the um, scientists were conjecturing that it may be how the subatomic particle self-propels or gets around <laughs> moves. <laughs> this orb right here is doing something that looks like a twist in three different directions. And they spill over. The colors from one orb will spill over into another. And that happens very often. I can't help but think that these orbs communicate with one another by their actions. I found this statement in a metaphysical book called The Return of the Dove. Now this, is, this orb has a lot of violet in it. During the Aquarian Age, the violet fire of the mighty seventh ray will constantly surge up and through the earth, washing over every single atom that makes up the globe. 
That's a good thought. Often I see these dark bands of stuff that cross and crisscross the uh, the uh, orb. You can see that here. Don't know what it is. But I do know it drapes itself. See how it has doing that here? It just falls over one orb and down past another like like material. Now, this one camera I have puts two eyes in every orb. If it's not too dark a color of the orb, you'll see the eyes. See them several places here. It's they're always located in the same place on the orb, which is usually a little to the right and a little lower than center. And I see this. You'll, if you notice in the pictures to follow, you'll see the two eyes, two eye sockets, I call them. But I'm showing you pictures made from, taken from several pit cameras, so some of them don't have it. See, sometimes they don't twist in the middle; they twist at one end. And look how flexible the orb is. Look how it just can, it, it's, it's alive it seems to me, it just, it can do anything. And look at this one, it looks like a waterfall or it's like it's um, a wave cresting or something. Sometimes I see the orbs doing this, making a long tunnel that orbs move through and uh, you see the two eyes? That was with my older camera. That is the one that has the artifacts. And in this one you can see the pattern of color fall over the edge of one photon and into another. See right down here where I'm pointing with the arrow. See, it just goes to the edge, falls down and changes direction somewhat. So I get many strange things in the photon. But my next few pictures I'm going to show you some beautiful colored orbs because I, I, I really love my colorful orbs. I just fall in love with the way they combine colors. Look at that one. Isn't that spectacular? So I'm just going to show you several of these so you get an idea of how beautiful they can be. Sometimes I, I put a bunch of these on to uh, to just pan and zoom through, and I just sit back in my room and look at the color of them, one after the other coming into view. And it's sort of relaxing and helping a person to sort of um, meditate as they look at these colorful orbs go by. Well... Now, enough of the colorful orbs. Next, I'll show you some photons that have dark spots in them. Like this. And this one has a dark mass on one side of the orb, and it's sending tendrils through the rest of the orb of the same kind of dark matter. And I often get orbs that have this pattern in it or something real similar to this pattern. Here's an unusual one. And this one was very dark but it had a blue edge. <laughs> and they just are so interesting to look at. Sometimes you can imagine you see a little face in there but what is really easy to imagine is that there's dimension to it. That there's little crawl spaces in it and all kinds of things. There's certainly a lot of rings and tubes and little tiny circles. And then sometimes you get an orb like this. Or one like this. And that definitely has dimension. It's like you could, like a little opening to a spider's nest. They do have dimension. 
and yet they're right here in my room, in the empty space of my room. And probably they're everywhere where there's empty space. I don't think we have to get out into really far into space out there with the stars and all to see what might be out there. I think whatever is out there is also in the tiniest of empty spaces, like right in our own rooms. There's one unusual looking thing and another. And see this one, this orb, is that dark little bubbly looking things and uh, it's right next to an orb that's really bright. Sometimes they're not spectacular colors but more earth tone but still very interesting. There's another one of those things that looks like a rat's tail. <laughs> and then a lot of orb pictures I have taken, orbs that I have taken pictures of, rather, have these little things that look like branches and brambles running through them. Now, this is maybe my most interesting thing to tell you about. This is a character, I call it Harry. It's, it looks like a little spider to me. And... Uh, it drops down into an orb or comes in from the side and it just kind of is like I call it my friend because it's always going to show up eventually when I'm taking pictures with that particular camera. I used to think that maybe he was a little piece of debris, but I don't really think that anymore. And sometimes when I'm not seeing Harry, I can say, just say, this is my only form of communication, by the way, I say, Harry, show up. And within a minute or so, he's, he shows up. There's another one of him. He shows up a lot. I've got many, many pictures of Harry. And see how the orbs, when they come out of the light, first they're a little bit teardrop shaped and then they become rounder as they get further out. And uh, it's just so interesting. I never know when I'll get something different. Now, I'm going to read this. This is from, I think, Walter Russell. It is difficult to conceive Earth and all of its phenomena of motion, sound, people, animals, and plant life as a motion picture projection from our sun. And I kind of believe, believe that. The sun is full of ideal. But ideal has to be expressed in, in simulated ideal in our world of form. Strange indeed are the kinds of things I film inside these orbs. And sometimes the orb just does this spastic kind of movement and will look similar to this. Now it was several years ago that I took uh, the spastic looking orb pictures. Lately they haven't been doing this. Since light is the highest vibration frequency known to humanity, it is reasonable to conclude that spirit is light. Since spirit is the creator with the power of manifestation, learn to illumine the mind and heart with the light of the God force. And that was said by El Morii. Man is forever finding the light and forever is being transformed by finding it. Gradually, he finds the self of him, which is the light. Light is all there is. Often the colors are very electric, bold, and quite beautiful. I'll show you a few of the very bold. Another spastic looking one, and another, and another. I have quite a few of them. This one looks more like a ripple. This one looks like it's vortexing around and making a kind of horn looking thing. And you see that pattern there, the two balls that come together? Sometimes it looks like a little X. This orb seems to be getting gift wrapped with a ribbon. 
They can fan out like this. They can look like this. They can fold in all kinds of ways. And they can twist in the middle and be spastic as they twist. This orb is on my eye. <laughs> Anything, be it glass or plastic or porcelain or metal, if it will reflect some light in a shiny spot, then there's an orb there. There's that pattern again. Sometimes the orb can look something like this without any definition. There's that pattern again. And they make lots of bull's eyes. I'm going rather fast because I've gotten 30 to 30 minutes already. I don't know how long I can go on YouTube. This is a holy orb. Here's one with much color and here's one that shows all the little eye sockets. And see the color just drapes over that one. This one shows an example of their folding styles, four of their different ways. Now this one doesn't seem to have roundness or a border around it. It's just a glob. This is one I took years ago that I thought was so beautiful. Now you may have seen pictures of what they call light ships in the sky that have this kind of look to them. But that's, that's an orb doing that. I get up with my camera on really close in, I get up so close that you don't even hardly see the outer edges of the orb. And circle, circle, circles. And this is a cannonball or being shot out of a tube. <laughs> oh, they are strange looking and colorful and beautiful. This one looks like a wave. Now one day only, it was August, August the 13th, 2013, I started seeing these little uh, donut looking things inside the orbs that, that day and I kept seeing them in all the orbs. I'll show you. Well, there's Harry again. There's the donut in this one. And see how these little balls that come close together but don't quite touch make what looks like an X. Sometimes you get straight lines, variegated in color, but, you know, are things that look like a swarm of something or a torrent of something. Here's another kind that looks like a ribbon bending over right there on the edge. Looks like lace sometimes. Here's the one with a whirly bird. And there's just oh so many ways it can look. And I want to say, let's explore light. That's all I can say. I'd like to put together a book that shows the orb art and call it Orb Art Designed by Light. And if you know how to help me with that, any of you out there, well, if we make any money, we'll share it. I hope I've interested you in investigating this further. I would love to conduct experiments with different cameras, with someone who has more knowledge of photography, and even with computers and how to make videos, because I think there's more to be revealed by light. It is what everything is made of. And this is the Dove Lady over and out for this first segment of my documentary on light orb.